Hi guys, welcome to Book Time. My name's Julia. Today I'm going to be doing the TBR for the upcoming Autumn Readathon. So the Autumn Readathon is a readathon that was hosted, I think, last year for the first time by Mercedes over at Mercy's Bookish Musings, who she's one of my favourite booktubers. I think she's the very first booktuber I ever started watching. So it's thanks to her that I'm here. Um, and she hosted this last year and she's going to host it this year. I thought it sounded really fun. So I think it's from this Saturday to the following Friday and I don't know what the dates are. I'll put them up on the screen. But anyway, I'll link her video down below about it where she goes through all the prompts. She's got four prompts and a couple of bonus prompts, but I'm just going to go through the normal prompts because that's what I'm going to try. Um, even though it's spring here, it's actually not autumn here in Australia. It's spring and it's very warm. It's going to be 28 degrees today which I love, I love hot weather and it doesn't bother me at all to read like autumnal or cold feeling books while it's actually warm here. I don't, I don't mind doing that. So um, yeah, I'm excited to get into it. So the first prompt is to read a gothic or a spooky book and for that I'm going to pick up um, Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. I haven't read this one. In fact, the only book I've read of hers is Rebecca, which I think I read for uni back in, you know, like back when I was 18 or something and to be honest I don't really remember it um, so I would love to get back to Rebecca as well but because I haven't read this at all I thought I'd give this one a go and it sounds um, so it's set on the windswept Cornish moors about a woman called Mary who after her mother dies I think I'm just getting this information from the back um, goes to stay at her aunt's place and then it as it turns out, I think her aunt or her aunt's husband is involved in this hardcore smuggling operation that's being run out of the back of the Jamaica Inn, which I think is the, you know, prop, real, you know, legal business that they run. So, and then somehow Mary gets involved up in all this smuggling and murder. And I think there's like a romance, I'm not sure, but I read the first few pages and they seemed really gothic and like, autumnal and had a spooky vibe so um like really atmospheric and cold and stuff so I thought that sounded really good and I've been in a bit of a reading slump the last couple of weeks I'm just really struggling to feel motivated so I feel like this will be hopefully like just a great sort of plot and really fun book to get me back into reading because um the reason I thought of this actually was because Lauren from Lauren of the Books reread it recently and has been raving about it so it sounds like maybe it'll help get me out of my reading slump as well. So I'm excited about that one. The next prompt is um, a non-fiction book that fills a tunnel. And for that, Mercedes has said um, something as an example, something like nature writing or travel writing or memoir set in a cold place or about nature. So I'm going to give The Shepherd's Life, A Tale of the Lake District to Go by James Rebanks. I have actually tried to read this before and I didn't finish it intentionally. I sort of DNF'd it. Um, it's about, so it's a memoir by this guy, James Rebanks, who lives in the Lake District and he is narrating, um, and telling readers about being a shepherd there. And I think his family have been shepherds, um, for hundreds of years or some really long length of time. The idea of reading about a shepherd and someone who's been doing it for many generations really appealed to me because I love learning about things I don't know much about <laughs> um, and it also has a really beautiful cover which is probably what first attracted me to the book and it has had been a really popular book I think it was like an international bestseller but I just didn't love it I really struggled with the writing style it was very to be honest it just felt quite poorly edited like it was very repetitive like some paragraphs would reappear in it, their entirety like multiple times throughout the book and things like that and I just found it, even though I was interested in the content, I found the writing style sort of prevented me from actually accessing the content. Um, so that kind of bugged me, which is why I didn't finish it. And also the tone was a little bit like, if you're not from the Lake District, you'll never understand, so don't even try. But I don't know if that was intentional or not. So anyway, it just kind of bugged me that I didn't finish it because I paid full price for it. And the idea, like the content is quite good. So I'm going to give it a go because I would really like to finish it. If I can't do it, if I can't get into it, I do have a backup book, which is called Arboreal, A Collection of New Woodland Writing, edited by Adrienne Cooper. Now, this is published by um, Little Toller, and I actually saw this on Mercedes' channel, so I'm sort of doing this, like, in honour of her. Um, 
I saw this a few years ago and Little Toller is a small UK publisher. Their books are not released here, so I had to order it from the UK and pay like $1,000 in postage. But I could not resist. And if, if I could, I would order the entire catalogue of this publisher. It's all nature writing, memoir, fiction, poetry, and it's all like beautifully published, like this beautiful edition. I think that's what grabbed me. And then like it has these gorgeous end papers. Anyway. This is um, an anthology, as you can see, there are heaps of contributors and it's a mixture, I think, of memoir. I think there might be some fiction and there's definitely poetry in there as well. And I think there might even be some photographs. Yep. So it's sort of a mix and it's all to do with nature in the UK. And all of them, even though the style, I've, I've read a couple before. Um, and the style between them all varied greatly, which it really interests me to sort of read a broad swathe of different takes and approaches to nature in the UK. Um, and, and the woodlands, so it's kind of specifically about the forests. And then each of them is set in a specific location. So this one's South Mead Coppice and Dorset, Hannah's Wood, Heart of Wales, Burnham Beaches, um, Epping Forest. So I'm really excited about this. So in a way, I'm kind of hoping I don't like the other book um, so I can get into this and I probably will try and read this anyway because I've had it for like two years and haven't actually finished it. So yeah, I'm excited about this one and I'll, I'll link it down below in the publishing house because they've just got beautiful, gorgeous stuff. So there's that one. The next one, so the third prompt is a novel set in a third location and actually I think I got... Um, the idea for reading this author from Mercedes as well. Um, so this is a library edition, so it's a bit glary. Um, it's The Valley at the Centre of the World by Malachi Talek, um, who I think is a Scottish writer, I want to say. Um, in any case, this is set in Shetland and it sounds really cool. I got it from the library recently and need to read it soon before it's due back, so it fits quite well into this readathon, which is lucky. Um, so I'll just read Shetland, a place of sheep and soil, harsh weather, close ties and an age old way of life. A place where David has lived all his life, like his father and grandfather, but where he abides only in the present moment. There's a few other characters. Um, anyway, essentially it says debut novel from one of our most exciting new literary voices. The Valley at the center of the world is a story about community and isolation, about what is passed down and what is lost between the cracks. I thought it just sounded awesome and has a beautiful cover. It's kind of hard to see um, of a little house up on it, like a rock. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this one and I'm obsessed with, I haven't been to Shetland, but I would love to go one day. Um, I'm really obsessed with that part of the world. I used to live in Scotland. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that one. And the final one, the final prompt is a historical novel. So for that, I've picked an Aussie one. It's called To Become a Whale by Ben Hobson. I have talked about this on my channel before, maybe in my Goodreads tag video. Um, this is, so Ben Hobson's an Australian writer. He's from Brisbane, which is up north in Queensland. And I think he's from Brisbane. <laughs> Some, he's from somewhere up there. And yeah, this is set in 1961. And from what I gather on the back, it's about a boy whose mum dies. And so he goes, I think he's about 13, he goes to work with his dad on a whaling station. But all the men on the whaling station, it's like a pretty hardcore sort of masculine environment. And the boy is not, he doesn't feel like that. He's more of a sensitive boy. And it's about him kind of negotiating his masculinity in this so-called man's world. Um, sounds really cool. As I said, I think in my other video, I've read the first few pages and it was really beautifully written. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into this one. And Ben Hobson has a YouTube channel as well and he seems like a really nice guy. So it's always nice to support other Aussie writers, really. So yeah, they're my books for the Autumnal Readathon. As I said, I'll post Mercy's video down below. It takes place from next Saturday to the following Friday, which is like the 21st, to the 25th or 6th or something like that. And I'll do a wrap up after it's done. Um, if anyone else is going to do the autumn readathon, I mean, there are so many readathons going on right now. There's like Victober and there's like a billion different autumn based reading challenges. And then we're going into nonfiction November. So I know, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. But if anyone else is doing this one or any other one, let me know what you're reading. Um, and thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.